Hey, what's up guys? Lucas here. Welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you how to turn your illustrations into looking like they came out of a comic book. We're gonna be adding all of these nice textures, half tones, paper textures, so that they look like an old school vintage comic book because that is the style that I like. All right, so let's get started. Throughout the video, I'm gonna be using my new pack of brushes, the LP Halftones. If you want to follow along with the same brushes, the link is down there in the description. But of course, you are free to follow along with whatever brushes you have or textures that are similar to the ones that I'm gonna be using for this illustration. I like to use references for my work as much as I can because I feel that it gives my work a look of realism and that I also learn every single time that I use a reference. So for this one, I just looked into my iPhone and I looked into the photos that I had and I found this one right here of my girlfriend just sitting in front of a scooter. I thought it was cool, I thought it was fun and I started just by copying this reference. Now, something that I think it is super, super important for your illustrations is to make them about something, especially if you're trying to make a comic book because comic books are all about storytelling. I really don't like to have just a pretty picture that doesn't tell a story, or at least I try to do my illustrations with an idea behind them. So in this case, my girlfriend just sitting in front of a scooter wasn't enough for me to think about this as an illustration. So I needed an idea. So looking at the pose and looking at what the character was doing, I started having an idea of maybe introducing a second character, maybe a little cat, and I started making a story in my mind of maybe this is a girl that rides her scooter around the city and maybe she really likes animals and nothing, she's just feeding this little cat that she found on the street. I really don't think that you need something super elaborate to be able to justify telling a story. Just something small like this little interaction is enough for me to feel like I am doing something more than just a pretty image. So with that rough version of my idea and sketch done, it was time to clean my drawing. Yeah, yeah, all this money on me. Yeah, yeah, cash rules all around me. Yeah, yeah, all this money around me. Yeah, yeah, cash rules all around me. I always like to work from general to specific because I personally think that is the most efficient way to work. You know, in the first pass, you try to get your shapes right, your story right, and then on the second pass, you go and you start putting little details. For example, this small patch that I am drawing on her shoulder is a little internal joke, it's the logo of my art school, and you can already see that I have planned there on the scooter to put some other patches and, and stickers. These ones are inspired by Akira, that is one of my favorite mangas. You travel like you must be tough out of your luck, huh? I'm that go to when she down to come through clutch, huh? Sit brown till I'm flush time, I drip. Alright, so let's talk about the inking now. I feel like inking is such an iconic element from comic books that I don't have a right to tell you how to do it or how not to do it because every artist out there has his or her own way of doing inking. This is the way that I like doing it and it is a more maybe sketchy and sharp way. That's why you see me using this brush that has a bit of a rough texture. Something that I am always reminding myself to make a good inking is that people are not going to see my sketch, but people are going to see my inks. So what I like to do or what I try to do throughout the whole process is to lower the opacity of the sketch enough that I am relying only on the inking to be able to see my illustration. I think that one of the biggest mistakes that people do when inking is that they think that they should just like trace or clean their, their sketch and what that does is that it kills all the life and all the expressiveness of their original sketch. Once I'm happy with the whole first pass of the inking, I like to go at it again and this time put those small black spots wherever the shadows of the character would be. And I feel like those small spots of black really, really help to make your illustration pop. How much black to add in your inks is really up to you, but this is kind of like the amount that I like to add. So. Every time that I see a hole or, or a little crevice in my character, I like to add a big flat of black because I just feel it really makes everything else in the illustration pop out. 
With the inking done, I was ready to move into the coloring. This illustration, I actually didn't know if I was gonna do it in black and white or in color, so I started the process in black and white. A lot of comics and mangas don't have shadows and still look fantastic, so you are free to include them or not, but for this illustration, I really wanted to have some shadows in there, so I started planning them with a simple round brush, just going over it very roughly to plan the direction of the light. And to get that vintage old school comic book look, once the shape for the shadows was ready, I replaced them with this halftone texture. And if you're looking for a black and white finish for your illustrations, honestly you can just leave this one as it is and I think it is already looking pretty damn great. But I'm gonna show you how to add colors and some post-production effects that are gonna really take it to the next level. So to turn this black and white illustration into a full color one, I went back into the masks that I made for this black and white version and I started recoloring with a limited palette of colors. Alright, so here is where the magic happens. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks for you to take your illustrations to the next level. One of the first things that you're gonna want to do is to color the shadows of your illustration. I like to keep them all in the same layer because that way I can color them super easily. And a quick tip if you're trying to figure out which color to use for your shadows, something that I personally like to do is to use the same color for the shadows as I have in my environment. Now this girl of course doesn't have an environment, but if for example she would be kneeling in a desert, I like to use warm tones for my shadows. If she would be in a field of grass, then I like to use green and so on. Another little thing that really adds to your illustrations is to add some color variation to some of the flat colors of your painting. I am using a halftone shader brush for this part because it allows me to make the dots smaller or bigger depending on the pressure that I am using on my brush. This is super fast to do and it works every single time, so I definitely recommend it. Let's bring the shadows back and let's make one more little trick to make your illustration look better. I cannot believe that not every single artist out there is using this technique. Because adding an overlay layer on top of your illustration at the end always, always never fails to make my illustrations pop out more. This brings the vibrance of the whole illustration up and it really accentuates the 3D shape of my character without actually having to paint much of anything. And now for the final tip, and this one is actually my favorite, I'm gonna import and apply some paper textures to my illustration. But just slapping a paper texture on top and lowering the opacity is not gonna do the trick, so I'm gonna tell you exactly how to apply this one so that it looks legit. I actually include these couple of paper textures with my brushes, but you can use any type of paper texture that you want. What you need to have is two versions of the same paper, one positive and one negative, that's why you see that one of the papers is black. You're gonna grab that positive version of the paper and you're gonna put it in multiply mode. This is the one that is gonna add all of that nice warmth. But the secret to this is to grab the second, the negative version of the paper and put it in screen mode. This is the one that is gonna make all of that paper texture come through to your illustration and really make it look old school vintage and have that nice beautiful grain on everything, the inks, the colors and the halftone textures. And with the last minute adjustment of a drop shadow on the floor, here is the final illustration. <laughs> much for watching this video till the end, I hope that you guys learn a ton with it. If you want to use the same brushes that I was using throughout the whole video, you can get them in the link down there in the description, they are the LP Halftones, they are brand new in my store, so you can get them down there and your support is of course greatly appreciated. This was Lucas for DigitalPaintingMaster.com and I'll see you guys on the next video, bye.